Pinterest was my first job after college. Oh, and then I, I did I was just a, a software engineer on the growth mm. team. And then after that, I, I started a company that was uh, acquired by Credit Karma. Through that time, while I was thinking of different ideas and ideating, I was listening to you regularly. So oh, really thanks great. for that. Yeah, it's really <laughs> sure. interesting because I have these conversations with people on the show and then I meet them in person and they act incredibly friendly to me. And I'm like... <laughs> Because I already feel like we have a rapport and we were talking a little bit and shooting the shit before the show started. And I realized what it is. I've been in people's ears for a decade yeah. or five years yeah, talking to X. them on 2X. <laughs> and then you yeah. meet me in person and we start having these conversations. Oh, yeah. For some people, this is their 200th hour of having a conversation with me or being in a conversation because you're hearing me yeah. and another founder. And now it's a chance for people in high school to hear you on the yeah. program and be inspired. <laughs> when did you first hear about non-fungible tokens and this concept and what happened in your brain when mm. you saw it? So tw late 2017, which is really when this whole space began, I was deep into crypto. I was pretty set on doing something in the crypto space. It was just a matter of what, whether that was joining a company, starting a company, but I was going to all the meetups back when you could actually go to physical learning as much as I could about it. And then this project, CryptoKitties, which I believe you had on the show, Dapper Labs, hit the yep. mainstream tech scene and really showed the world that there was other stuff to do in crypto outside of pure financial or pure tech plays, but that this could be a more consumer mainstream audience type of technology. So that's when I, that's when the world heard of non-fungible tokens. And that's when I got interested in it. So yeah, a while back now. And what was your idea? You saw it happening, you crypto kitties, and you see this happening in a very open way. You must have had some aha moment to create yeah. your platform. Was your original idea to create non-fungible tokens or to create a marketplace? What was your original idea? Pretty much the original idea was to create a marketplace. Uh, there was a moment when we were doing a completely different idea in crypto around sharing Wi-Fi using cryptocurrency, but we quickly pivoted from that. And then there was a small moment where we just wanted to build a game on top of CryptoKitties. So one of the cool things about CryptoKitties was because owned them on the blockchain, you could go and build, developers could build experiences that use your CryptoKitties, but in different creative ways. So someone built like a, Kitty Hats application where you could accessorize your crypto kitties. And then this other team built a kitty racing thing. And they were all very early experiments, but that kind of led us to this idea. You can have these things outside of the original application that they were born in. And so that maybe you could build a marketplace that allows you to trade all of this stuff that exists outside of the game or the project. And that was the aha moment where we're like, okay, that's a cool new novel concept and then let's go and try and see if we can take it to market and of course it was such an early market that we had to patiently grow with the space as new nfts started coming online so it feels to me very much like the early days of the yeah. world wide <laughs> web where For you got sure. your internet connection and then maybe you had your email or you were in usenet news groups and you had mm -hmm. a, a news reader and then rss came and you had web browsers all these like yeah. disparate pieces in the experience it feels that way a little bit right now in crypto. You have people who let you mint NFTs to create mm -hmm. one. And then yep. you have marketplaces like yours. And then you have Roham's platform and, and what he's doing, a, a Dapper, and then also Topshop. How does this all fit together? Do all the tokens allow you to be traded anywhere so nobody has a lock on the assets? That's right. I would say that inventory of the assets, the, the beautiful thing about it is that the inventory is shared, right? So you can create an item on some art platform, but then you can actually go and it's in your wallet and you own it. So you can go and take it to OpenSea and resell it. So mm -hmm. some of our, some of the uh, marketplaces that are more oriented towards people will actually go and, and flip those on OpenSea or something like that. And then gaming, it's similar. We, we haven't seen, as you said, it's early days, but there's this cool idea where you could take an item from one game and actually bring it into another wow. uh, game pretty seamlessly. Because again, it's, it's all connected to your wallet. Um, and so users have the freedom to kind of do whatever they want with these things. And developers can really easily, once they get over the hump of learning how blockchains work, which is of course an area of development, they can like integrate these things. Yeah, there's less of a sort of data moat around the NFTs themselves. The NFTs that are minted through our platform, for example, aren't proprietary to OpenSea. They just happen to be created there. So it's and, a very, yeah. 
this was a very interesting concept because in fact, cryptocurrency people, the sort of dry run of cryptocurrency was mana and gold in games, specifically massively multiplayer online yeah. games. And people forget this, but Brock Pierce, who was big into cryptocurrency now, he had started a company called the Internet Gaming Company or Internet Gaming Entertainment with Steve Bannon, I believe, the, mm. the Trump's uh, organizer. Wow. And what their concept was, hey, people are playing World of Warcraft or whatever. We'll go into the game itself as a mm. character, take your <laughs> plus 27 sword that's worth $800 that you spent a year building up your character or your sword or whatever you found, and then we'll go give it to somebody else, but we'll make sure on our website you have bought that item, um, yeah. which was completely against everybody's terms of service, et cetera. <laughs> and but I think they did it out of China, if I remember correctly. There was, was some way they were getting around this currency selling. And it was explained that those were like m miles for, they weren't currency because they were like airline miles. They didn't really have an equivalent. And then of course, Mark Pincus did Zynga and he had Zynga coins, et cetera. So that was all this kind of interesting dry run. But is anybody doing that yet where in, a, in one game, Fortnite, you could take an asset, put it on the blockchain and trade it? Has that even come to pass yet? A little bit. So I would Got say it. that the most promising experiences there are so there's all this digital art out there, right? There's like people minting this expensive crypto art. There's even some traditional artists starting to mint just pure digital art. And there's these virtual world projects. One is called the Central Land, another one is called Crypto Voxels. And these virtual world projects let you bring that digital art in and make museums of it. So that's wow. this first instance, right, where you can you have this equivalent of a physical environment to display your digital stuff. And suddenly it's like that digital stuff starts feeling a lot more real because you can take it with you to these different places. So gaming there's been a few experiments of, i think you could bring your crypto kitties into this trading card game like early stuff but i think the there's this really interesting symbiosis with the digital art world and these virtual worlds that's going on and that's where a lot of the kind of early activity is happening it's not happening from like the more mainstream established games it's more early startups that are more experimental how much time and money do you spend integrating a bunch of different software products together at your company? Let me guess, way too much time. Odoo is here to help. Odoo is a suite of business apps that runs your entire company on one platform. They'll streamline your workflow by bringing all of that information together. Plus, Odoo's integrations eliminate repetitive tasks and data entry. If you only need two or three apps to optimize your workflow, that's all you pay for. Odoo won't stick you with the bill for apps you don't use. Odoo has an app for every business need. They offer 30 main apps that are updated regularly and over 16,000 apps from their active open source community. You can keep your books tight with their financial software and their sales and CRM apps will help provide a clear and organized view of your business. So here is your call to action. Your first app is free forever. And right now Odoo is offering a one thousand dollar credit on your first implementation pack that's not a joke that's a thousand dollars just go to odoo.com slash twist to check it out that's odoo.com slash twist